What's going on, you guys? It's Brother Winston here. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about a subject which is controversial, but it's very important that you understand. The subject is once saved, always saved. So before we begin, let's pray. Lord, I pray, bless this video, Lord God. Touch somebody, give someone understanding, and of course, bring forth revelation. I thank you for all you're doing. May your kingdom come, and it will be done on earth, it is heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're blessed by this video in any way, please share it, okay? Um, when people share my videos, that's probably the best way that my videos can get more views okay on this channel trying to grow this channel um and if you want me to talk about any particular subject please leave it in the comments below now today we're going to be talking about once saved always saved I'm, I'm going to tell you right from the very beginning okay once saved always saved is not in the word of god okay and it is not something that the lord promotes and it is actually a doctrine of a demon the bible talks about doctrines of demons essentially teachings of demons teachings that that actually originate from hell and end up in the church this once saved, always saved, you can say what they call the sinner's prayer, okay? And once you say this prayer, you are saved no matter what you do, okay? You're, you just have a blank, uh, you know, you have, you have a blank check to get into heaven because you said the prayer, Lord, I want to be saved. That is falsehood and it, and it will lead you to a burning hell. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Bible. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go into the book of Revelation, the last chapter of the entire Bible, Revelation chapter 22. Now, there are a lot of scriptures that could debunk once saved, always saved, okay? But I'm not going to go into all of that right now because the reality is that if you're a believer and you read the word, this is once saved, always saved, something you should easily understand is false. But there are Christians, okay? There are people that I minister with on the streets. I, I minister, I said this before, I minister on the streets of Philadelphia and preach on the streets and pray for people every single week. Every single week, okay? I'm, like, I'm also a pastor, okay? I do this, we do this every single week, okay? Our church does this every single week. And there are people who, who I've gone out with from other churches, okay? And they tried to bring that one seat always. And I told them, listen, do not say that while we're out here. If you want to say that, you know, you want to part ways, okay? And they actually said, all right, I understand, okay? I said, I'm not favored. I showed them from the scriptures. I said, look, <laughs> this is false teaching. And, you know, I know your church may believe in that, but this is false teaching and not going to come out of our speakers here, you understand? So let's look at, once again, and uh, I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling you that story because that's how serious this is. This, this, that's how serious this is. That teaching, once they always save, can put somebody in hell and, and they'll be thinking they're going to heaven. Okay? Revelation chapter 22. All right. Um, and let's read here um, verse 18. It says, I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the place which are written in this book. And, check, and then check this out. It says, and if anyone takes away from the words of the of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city, which are written in this book. Okay. So look what God says. God says, if you try to take away uh, what I said, God says, I will take away a part from the tree of life. Okay. And also from being in, 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 in the city. Now the Bible says that those who are in the city, the, the new Jerusalem, they're the ones who are saved. Okay. God says, you're not going to be in there. So essentially you're not going to be a part of the kingdom of God. Then he says, I also not allow you to get part, you take part in the tree of life. Okay, so you'll actually enter into eternal death. Okay, once again, to take part in the tree of life, which the Bible talks about, okay, are, is for those who are saved, those who are re the redeemed. Okay, now you may say, well, if I say the prayer and ask Christ to come into my life, okay, I'm redeemed no matter what. Now, I've heard people say, and I've heard pastors preach, well, you know, um, Jesus prayed to the Father and he said, you know, no one can take them out of my Father's hand. You know, I and the Father, Jesus said, you know, no one can take anyone out of my Father's hand. You know, I and the Father are one, and so on and so forth. And it's true that the devil cannot snatch you out of God's hand. But watch this. I know you've heard it before. You haven't. It's the time to understand this. You can leave the Father's hand. You may, And I've heard, like, this guy on YouTube was teaching this. He was saying that basically, you know, he was saying, you think that God is not all-knowing? That God would not have a plan? You know, that if he chose you, he wouldn't have a plan already foreordained for you to be good, to go into heaven one way or another. I want you to understand that's a bunch of baloney and it's garbage. People that say those things do not understand the word. This is serious. They do not understand the word of God. And they don't understand that you have free will. <laughs> and they love to say, oh, God's giving us free will. God's giving us free will. If he's giving you free will, then why don't you have the opportunity with your free will to leave God? See what I'm saying? Let's say, for example, I want to be—I want to be a saint. I'm gonna break this down very, very simple. I'm not gonna go into every single scripture because this is something that you should easily be able to understand if you're a Christian. Okay, it's not something that's complicated at all. But they try to make it complicated because the devil wants to get you confused and wrapped up. Okay, so you can be chained up and bound up by these false doctrines and then go to hell where he is. It's just serious. This is serious. This is one of the most serious um, doctrines 
that you have, you should avoid, okay, out of all of them, okay, think about this, you know, the devil says, hey, man, once saved, always saved, okay, I'm going to make it really, really simple, I'm going to make it real simple for you guys, okay, God made Adam and Eve, okay, when he made Adam and Eve, he gave them free will, am I right about that, yes, you believe that God gave Adam and Eve free will, yes, okay, now let's say that, for example, um, Adam and Eve wanted to eat the fruit, which they did, okay? And God appeared and said, you know, first God told him, he said, listen, guys, you cannot, he said, don't eat this fruit. He didn't say you can, you know, you cannot, but he said, do not. He said, he said, doing this will, will bring havoc and destruction and death. Okay, he said, it will bring death to you guys, okay? He said, the day that you eat this fruit, you will surely die. I'm talking about the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What did Adam and Eve do? They ate the fruit. Eve ate, and then she gave it to Adam. Adam knew not to eat it, and what did he do? He ate it, okay? And then we see that, it made a separation between God and man, which Jesus had to come to reconcile us. He had to become the bridge between heaven and earth because we separate ourselves from God. Okay. Why didn't it, when they tried to eat their fruit, all of a sudden the fruit just disappeared in our hands. Think about it. God could have made it happen, but he didn't make it happen because we, we, we're giving free will. That's why we're giving free will. All right. Free will to choose eternal death or eternal life. Okay, they may, they may say, well, that's pre, that's before Christ um, died on a, on a cross. Oh, so now you're, so what you're saying is that when Christ died on the cross, God's removed our free will. That's basically what you're saying. If you're, if you're telling me that's, if that's your, your answer to that, to that um, you know, situation I just brought up, okay? Your, your answer to the fact that God gave us free will before Christ is now, oh, after Christ, we, we don't have free will. Now. They may say, oh, well, no, we have free will. Okay, so we have free will. Why is it that I cannot leave becoming a Christian and become a Satanist? You know, there are many Christians who left the Lord and became Muslims. I know a guy, I used to live with a guy, okay, in a program. And the guy was a Christian, okay, I was living in a shelter some years ago. And this guy was a Christian, we used to read the Bible together in a group, okay, in, in the room. Uh, guys would come, some guys were even Muslim, okay, because we, we were like, we had like a, a room, they were like a, it was almost like a jail, okay, we had people who were assigned in certain rooms. And I remember there was one guy that was Muslim, he would listen as, as we read the word of God too, okay, and talk and so on and so forth, okay. And we all were together, okay. And there was one guy who was who I uh, remember specifically. He was a believer, okay. And then he ended up dating this girl who was a Muslim, okay. And he became a Muslim, okay. Now let's say, a few. I remember talking to him, and I ended up, and he said, you know, we all believe in the same thing. And I said, no, we don't believe in the same thing. He said, we don't believe in the same thing at all. And I said, read the word. It says not the same. A lot of people that say, oh, the Bible and Islam are saying no, they're, they're totally different. And Islam is actually against the Bible, okay. Islam coming 400 plus years after Christ even died, okay, and rose again. All right, that's how, you know, how distant they even are, okay? If you think they're, they're, they're like side by side, they're not. And then in and then in, in Islam, they speak against um, Christians and Jews often, okay? In, in the Quran, excuse me, okay? But going back to this subject, okay? This guy ended up turning from the Lord and becoming a Muslim, okay? That was his choice to become a Muslim, all right? So in his mind, when he wants, remember the Bible says God will give us the desires of our heart. Okay. Now, his mind, he wanted to go to a heaven where he would have like 12 virgins or how many, many virgins they give you, 40, whatever the case is. He wouldn't have those virgins, okay? He didn't want to see Jesus Christ. He didn't want to go to heaven and be worshiping God and saying, Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy of my praise, you're worthy. He didn't want none of that. He wanted Allah, and he wanted the promises that Muhammad promised him. That's what he wanted, okay? So why would it be right for God to then take him, because he was a Christian before, all right, <clears throat> bring him to a heaven that he doesn't want to go to, and force him to worship Jesus. Because you have to understand in heaven, people are worshiping God. It's not just a place where you just do whatever you want to do. Heaven is a place where you worship the Lord. Or let's say that my friend decided to become a Satanist. Okay, he became a Satanist. And there are people who are Christians, okay, who became Satanists. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, that couldn't happen because God knows all things. No, God's giving everyone free will. That is, excuse me, bring up all the time about, you know, like this brother was bringing up on this video, God knows all things and this and that. Of course, God knows all things, but it has nothing to do with your free will. God knows what you're going to do. And the reason why I say it is because they'll say, well, God would not elect you and save you if he knew you were going to turn from him. That's totally false and bogus. You can see that easily, for example, with um, Judas in the Bible. Judas was one of the disciples. Okay, was he not? Yes. Did he believe in Christ? Yes, he did. He, he stole, but he still believed in Christ. Okay, he was one of the disciples. But God, and God knew that Judas was going to turn on him, but he still chose Judas. He still chose him. Now, you may say, well, Judas wouldn't happen. I want you to know that most likely Judas did not go to heaven. You may say, well, how, how can you say that? Well, if you read the Bible, Jesus speaking about Judas and the word of God, he said, um, when they were at the table, I believe, eating the Last Supper, but woe unto the person who betrays me, it would be better if he had never been born. I believe he said that at the Last Supper. He said, I know that Christ said it, but I believe it was right at that moment at the Last Supper, okay? And he said, 
But woe to the one who, who betrays me. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Okay. Now, Judas just died. Because we see a little while, while after that, within a matter of hours, Judas committed suicide. Okay. Now, here it is. Okay. Well, I, all these people like to say, well, Judas went to heaven. Okay. If that's the case, why would Jesus say it would have been better for him if he had never been born? <laughs> see what I'm saying? Think. Think about these things. Okay. Then again, we see with Paul in the Bible. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I finished the, the, the course. I've kept the faith. Why would he use the terminology, I've kept the faith, unless it's something that can be lost? You understand what I'm saying here? This is this false, see, this false doctrine of once saved, always saved, which really was not even in existence for that long, okay, is a doctrine created by Satan to essentially create rogue Christians who do, who think they can live any kind of way and get into heaven. And they'll always tell you, once saved, always saved isn't, isn't a uh, license to sin. We're still supposed to live holy. Why? If you're once saved, always saved, you might as well live any way you want to. Because it's once saved, always saved. You understand what I'm saying? Every society, and I was saying this, I believe, at church just, just, just uh, this past Sunday, okay? Every society, okay, has law and order in one way or another, okay? In America, our prisons are kind of harsh. Whereas in other countries, you know, their prisons are kind of light. But still, they they, they, they create, the, the, a lot of times they create, they rehab people. They rehab, you know, uh, lawbreakers, essentially, one way or another, okay? In America, sometimes people are rehab, sometimes they are not. Okay? Sometimes, you know, the way that the system is created, it just makes things worse. Whatever the case may be, there's law and order, okay, and judgment, judgments in prisons and jails so that people don't just, just, just think they can do whatever they want to do. And we know that, dude, that this comes from God because God made hell, which is a, a, a jail, and then like a fire, which is an eternal prison. Okay, the Bible says that one day hell will be thrown into what's called the lake of fire. Hell as a whole, okay, which is essentially in the earth. Okay, read the words. I was about how it's basically inside of the earth. Okay, hell is. It will be taken and thrown into a, like another dimension or a place called the lake of fire. It's a huge lake, okay. That's, that can contain hell and every person who's ever sent, who's, who's ever, you know, not accepted Christ as their personal savior, okay, or, or die outside of Christ, okay. We see also in the Old Testament, God said, um, now someone's going to say, oh, well, the Old Testament doesn't matter. Okay, but they will say that tithing matters from the Old Testament. They will, you'll, you'll say, okay, tithing matters. You'll say the Bible, as the Bible says, you know, um, you know, uh, thou shalt not kill. Oh, that matters. But that's from the Old Testament, okay. That's from the Old Testament. But when God says, I believe it's in either Isaiah or Jeremiah, where God says um, that if, it, or it could be Ezekiel was one of the major prophets, where God says, if anyone, um, you know, follows me and obeys me, okay, and then turns from me, okay, and decides to do evil, God said in the word, he said, none of his good deeds will be remembered. That's the scripture that you can look up. God actually says, None of his good deeds that he's committed, if he chooses to turn away from me and live in sin, God said, none of your good deeds will be remembered, okay? So for somebody that's saying, well, hey, man, that's the Old Testament. It's the same guy. It's the same guy. Jesus died on the cross, had nothing to do to change what God said. If you choose to depart, none of your good deeds will be remembered, okay? In any, in any country, you could be the best person in the world. You could be, a, um, you know, a huge philanthropist, okay? Do all kinds of stuff, but if you're caught... As a child molester, they're not going to say, wait a second, he molested some children. She molested some, some boys. But look, 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 She was a flanter, but she gave to the poor. No one's going to say that. No one's going to, on earth, would say that in any country. But we, but we think we can trick God and game God and say, hey, God, you know, um, even though I'm in sin, even though I have five different girlfriends, okay, and I'm a pastor, and I'm a bishop, and I'm a whatever, a deacon, okay, even though I'm an artist kind of stuff, even though I'm robbing people, even though I'm stealing from the church, even though all this kind of stuff, you know, God, you know, I'm um, mishandling the church funds, okay? It doesn't matter because I believe that, I believe that you exist, okay? And I want to go to heaven. That doesn't matter. You have to do what God says. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice, okay? Then again, the Bible says that Christ learned obedience to things that he suffered, okay? The goal is to obey, is just to learn to obey God. That's what the Christian life is all about, Okay? Then the guy say to Paul that I know that my God will bring me safely, okay, to his heavenly kingdom. All right. Now think about that. Why would Paul say that he knows that God will bring him safely there? Okay. If he already accepted Christ, okay, why would he even say something like that? Because that's something that is 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 is, is something that's just known. Because hey man, you said to Christ, you say yes to Christ. So that's it. Okay. You can come to Christ and believe 
and then you can also leave Christ. Okay, it's as simple as that. That's why the Bible talks about faith so much. It talks about hold on to the word. Because if you do not, the outcome is that you can end up in hell. You can end up with the other sinners, okay, where you don't want to be, okay. You have to understand this first and foremost. Okay? And this is something that these people that push one saved always say. I don't think they really think about it or understand. Seriously, I really don't think they, they understand this. You have to understand you're only saved because you are in Jesus. People say, oh, I'm saved by grace. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved by that. Yeah, you're saved by grace, but you're really saved because you are in Jesus Christ. You have to understand that. You are saved because when God looks at you, he sees Christ. And the reason is, is because you chose to die. That's why the Bible says that you have to be born again. The reason why you're born again is because you you cho you've chosen to die spiritually in this world. You cho you've chosen to die in this life and then become reborn in Christ. Not just born again, but you're born again in Christ. Okay, imagine Jesus' body as big as the world, okay? Jesus came to this earth. He died on the cross. His body is now as big as the world, okay? Now, everyone who chooses to accept Christ and believe in him, they go inside of that body, okay? So when God looks at you and you sin, you say, God, please forgive me. God has you go inside of that body, okay? You're inside of that body, okay? When you sin and disobey God, you step outside, okay, of the body, okay? But when you say, Lord, forgive me, I repent, save me, you step back inside of the body, okay? When you sin, what you do is you step out of Christ. And you say, well, how, how do I step out of Christ? Because you have to understand, Christ would never sin and God does not sin. God and sin are not, are not together, okay? The Bible says God is love. Okay, and Christ will only obey God. The Bible says that God would, would never sin, and God Himself cannot be tempted to sin. Okay, so if, so if you sin, if you live a life of sin, you are not inside of Christ. Okay, you're actually inside of the body. You're actually inside of the the body of hell. It's actually you know a, hell actually has a body, and you actually put yourself spiritually there in hell. Okay, when you sin, when you sin, you actually make yourself one with with the demonic the demonic in the demonic realm, and even I would even say even hell when you commit sin. Okay, think about it. Let's, let's, let's go back. We'll go back even before the earth was made. Okay, this is to help you understand this. If you don't understand these things, okay, think about it. The angels did not the angels even have, have free will? Here they are, they're in heaven. They believe in God, they're praising God. And they may say, Oh, well, that doesn't apply to us. Yes, it does because it's letting you understand how God works. So don't say, Oh, it doesn't apply. Yes, it does apply. Okay, because it's showing you how God gives people free will. Okay, God gave the angels free will. Okay, and what were they doing? Praising God. Lucifer was praising God. They were all praising God in heaven. And then Lucifer, basically, as the word of God tells us, he basically convinced um, a certain amount of angels, listen, guys, we don't need to follow God. Follow me instead. Okay, and they chose to follow Lucifer. Okay, he thought he could do things better than God. God said, no, you can't, and you're not going to be doing that up here. I'm casting you in hell. I'm casting you out of heaven. Okay, my home. Okay, he was kicked out of God's home, which is heaven. Okay. And we see that these angels became demons. Okay, now why was it that they became demons? Why is, why is it they were kicked out of God's um, heavenly home? The answer is because they made a choice. Why is it that Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden? The answer is because they made a choice. Okay, oh, but when Christ comes and he saved us, now you can make a choice. Now free will is taken away. No, you still can make a choice. You can make a choice to come to Christ and be saved. You can also make a choice to leave Christ. Okay, you can also make that choice to leave Christ. You can make the choice to, to follow uh, to follow Islam. You can make that choice to follow um, Buddhism. You can make a choice to follow whoever you want to. Okay? We see, for example, in the Bible, it talks about a place called outer darkness. It says that the sons of the kingdom will be cast into a place called outer darkness. Outer darkness is essentially like a dimension of hell. Okay? The Bible does not say specifically that it's a dimension of hell, but the less you know, it's a place, it's a place of torment. It says they, they will be cast okay, into outer darkness. Okay, it's not heaven. Okay, it's not the abode of the saints, not the abode of God. It's, it's, a, it's a dimension of torment. The Bible says to the sons of the kingdom. That means that these are people who, when you believe in Christ, you become a son of the kingdom. Okay, that's specifically who he's speaking to. He's talking about people who were Christians, but they chose to disobey God. And Christ says in the word, he says that they will be cast into outer darkness. You understand? And what I'm telling you is the truth. It is the truth from God. God, years ago, actually, it may have been, may have been even last year, okay? God actually showed me a place called outer darkness. He showed me a dimension of outer darkness, okay? He was letting me know that because I was kind of um, um, slacking in my Christian walk. And he showed me a, a dimension. And this is what I saw, okay? I'm not trying to make this too long, but I want, you, I want you to understand this because this is a real place that you can go to, okay? If you believe once saved, always saved, you're just going to go right to heaven. That's a lie, the pits of hell. Okay? It's a trick of the devil to send you to hell. Thank you. I'm going to heaven. It's a trick of the enemy. 
okay? And in this vision God showed me, okay, I was um, essentially in an arcade, okay? And I remember in this, in this vision, a dream, um, there was this guy leading me around, okay? And I was saying, oh, this is such a nice arcade. And I was playing this game, and I played another game. And then, like, you know, if you've ever been to an arcade or been to a music park or whatever, sometimes you get tired, you just want to leave. So after a while, I got kind of tired of playing this game. And I said, you know, I'm going to get out of here. So as I tried to leave the arcade, this guy kind of kept getting in front of me, okay? And he was like, no, 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 no. And then he actually said something to me to the effect of basically, like, this is your life. This is your life for eternity, okay? You know, because what happened was that in the real world, okay, I would spend a lot of time, you know, um, focusing on games, okay, and just focusing on things that were not about the Lord, okay? Entertainment, self entertain, you know, just trying to entertain myself, okay? And God was just pleased about that, okay? So he showed me, he showed me that um, if I continue to live like that when I die, okay, that would be my that would be my lot essentially. I'll be confined to a, in my opinion, a dimension of outer darkness where I essentially would be surrounded with, with games, which would be like hell. And, my, and, and when I realized this, it was like in an instant when the guy basically said to me, like, look, man, you know, you can't leave because this is what you wanted. This is what you showed that you went through your life. I immediately knew that I, that I was being punished by God. I immediately knew that it was just just like, just like people when they go to hell, they know from the doubt that they belong there, okay? It's not like you feel like, oh, wait a minute, wait a second, why am I going to hell? Okay, you can feel it. It's like God gives you an understanding, okay? And I put a video, video about that, in, uh, on, on, uh, I think, on my other page, uh, which is Winston C. Gay Jr., okay? You look that up on YouTube, where I talk about, um, it's a video I have called um, um, Near Death Experience or something like that it's called. You, you'll find it on there. It's the only one that says something like that, and it shows like two doors on the video. But if you go on Winston C.K. Jr., I believe that that's the name of that page, um, you'll see that video. But um, essentially, God will give you understanding, okay, and let you know, look, man, this is where you, be this is where you belong because of what you decided in your life, okay. Um, and it was off. I was sitting there next to this arcade, arcade game, which I didn't want to play, and I had a feeling come over me like, like um, just a dread. And to tell you the truth, in my opinion, you know, and I've never burned, I've never seen, you know, I've seen hell at times, but I've never seen like the fires of hell, okay, and seen all that kind of stuff. God has shown me portraits of hell before, but I've never like seen, I've never seen like, you know, the fires of hell and all that kind of stuff or been in it, okay. But I can tell you this, that in my opinion, I felt like being where I was was worse than being in, being in hell. I felt that it was worse because the thoughts that you had, the thoughts that, you know, I had God, I had understand, I had all of this, and I wasted it, okay, and I wasted it. It just, it was a feeling I cannot express, okay, I cannot even, like, even scratch the surface of how bad it felt, okay. It was so bad, it was almost like, like the Bible says, for example, it says that, that, um, that those who that are cast out of God's presence, those who basically who are, you know, sent to hell and so on and so forth, it says that they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I could completely understand what that meant when it says, especially when it says gnashing the teeth, because it was almost like your teeth were, were being forced to be gnashed together. You would just be like, oh, it was just, you just felt immense pain because of the mental torment and anguish that you were going through, which is un, unbearable. I cannot express it. It was so bad, you know. I personally think that a person would actually, um, in their spiritual body, you know, they would actually gnash their teeth to the point where their teeth would fall out of their out of their mouth. That's how, that's how, um, bad the anguish was. Okay? It was unbelievable. Okay, I cannot even express it. All right, uh, it's so many scriptures in the Word of God that let us know. Okay, that you're only in Christ if you stay in Christ. Okay, if you obey Him. Okay, we see, for example, even in the Old Testament with Saul. Okay, Saul was chosen by God, but he disobeyed the Lord. He was chosen by God, and he disobeyed the Lord. Okay. He chose him, my God, and then God went, went on. He said, he said, he said, I will regret you picking Saul. Okay. And he just obeyed the Lord. All right. So, all in it, even with Satan, you see, Satan was chosen by God and he disobeyed the Lord. Okay. And he lost his position. If you think that you, you have an eternal position with God, even for example, I'll, I'll even say, for example, where, if you remember in the Bible where um, there were two disciples and their mother came and they basically said, you know, Lord, um, give us a place next to you on your throne and jesus told him he said that's not for me to, to decide that's for my father to those seats are, are for my father to give okay where you where you be positioned okay but we think we could just tell god look man i said the sinner's prayer okay so therefore i have a seat in heaven no you do not have a seat in heaven you do not have a seat in heaven until you step into heaven Okay, yeah, the Lord is, is, is building a home for you there as a mansion, all kind of stuff. Yeah, the guy has a seat reserved for you, 
but you have to obey him till the very end. Okay, the Bible says, for example, I believe in Revelation, it talks about um, that those who endure to the, um, actually, I'm sorry, it's in the Gospels. Jesus said, those who endure to the very end, they'll be saved. If, if you endure to the end, essentially, if you believe and hold on to, the, to your gospel, to this gospel, okay, the good news of God, you hold on to the very end, you will be saved. Okay, does it say those that say the sinner's prayer will be saved? It says those who endure to the very end. Okay, I mean, it's sad because I, you know, there are a lot of believers, okay, who for some reason, or so called believers, who for some reason grab on to this. And I want you to, and I want to say this really quickly to also to you guys to help you understand what I'm saying too before I get out of here. When you look at people, a lot of times they grasp on to the once saved, always saved theology, okay, these people many times are involved in sin themselves, okay? They really are. There's a guy, for example, who I know who is a minister of a minister of the gospel, okay? So he has a church and he ministers at it in the church, okay? And uh, basically, you know, he went from preaching, you know, seemingly regular, the regular, regular basic word of God into um, teaching once saved, always saved. And he ended up teaching... Um, not only once he always said, but he ended up teaching a, a doctrine where he said that sin cannot be imputed to a Christian, which is actually the same thing as once he always said. If you believe once he always said, you also believe that sin cannot be imputed to you as a, as a believer, as a Christian. Because, and the reason is because you're always saved. This guy actually was preaching, and I heard him say, he said, um, he said something to the effect of, um, you know, the lake of fire is hot and hell is hot, but I'll never experience that. That's literally what he said. He said, I'll never experience that because I believe in God. I'll never experience that. No, you don't know what you're going to experience because you don't know what, what to, the next today holds or the next day. You have to keep following God to the very end. And like Paul said, I, I fought the good fight. I've I, I finished the course. I've kept the faith. You have to keep that faith. Okay. You can't say, God, I got it. I and mean, you have to give it to me. You have to, um, you know, give me a, a seat next to you in your throne, which is what they were trying to say. No, that's not how it works. Okay. If you believe in one saved, always saved, you believe that sin cannot be imputed to a Christian. You believe that you essentially are perfect. And that even when you commit a sin, even when you disobey God, even if you were to leave and go into Satan, Satanism, whatever you want to do, that essentially you will always be saved. And for all these people that are going to say, oh, well, God, why not elect that person in the first place? That's baloney. That's not how the world and universe works. God does not just create stuff and not give people free will and force them to do what, they want, what he wants people to do. No, he puts everyone on this earth and gives them free will. Does he know the outcome of everything? Yes, of course he does. But regardless, he gives everyone free will. Some people will choose God. As the Bible says uh, regarding the, the, the um, <coughs> excuse me, the sowing of the seed, it says that the seed was sown. Does it not say that? And then it says that when the seed was sown, some received it. But it says that the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches okay, made the seed become unfruitful. You understand what I'm saying? Then again, we see in the Bible, for example, thank God for thank you, Lord, for bringing some our members. We see in the Bible with the, the, the 12 virgins, okay? I believe it was 12 of them, 12, these 12 virgins, okay? Did they not um, have lamps? Those lamps represent the fact that they were connected to the Lord and they were all saved, okay? It says that, it says that they were uh, supposed to go in when, they, when, when the guy came out and he says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Okay, remember down the word it says that? It says, that, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And the Bible says, Excuse me, the Bible says that only a few of them had oil in their lamps. Okay, it doesn't say that only a few of them were, were saved or, or, or had agreed that they wanted to go in. They all knew they had to go in when the bridegroom came because we see that the other ones, they wanted, they wanted to go in, which lets you know that they knew to go in, that they were saved, they wanted to go in, but they were prevented from going in. The reason why they were prevented from going in is because they didn't have any oil, they didn't have a relationship with God. Why? Because they were involved in sin. That's why, because sin removes your oil. Sin drains the oil out. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of people that say, oh, well, look, you know, once you'd always say, if that's the case, and that story would have said that 12 of them had basically um, lamps, and when he came out, 12 of them had oil. The other, um, excuse me, six had um, oil. The other six didn't have um, six had oil. Six, the other six didn't have oil, and they all went in, okay? But that wasn't the case. They all could not go in because some of them did not have oil in their lamps, and the oil represents the Holy Spirit and their relationship with God. You understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's obvious. It's uh, This is so, so, so obvious, okay? And I feel sad, but it's, it's really sad in me because, um, you know, the devil wants to deceive the body of Christ, okay? And that's why I'm, I'm putting this video out. I'm not a big YouTuber like the guy I'm talking about. I'm not, not going to mention his name, but if you know him, if you know him, you know what I'm talking about. And, he, and that's just one guy out of many, okay? Uh, there are many, many people online who preach this false doctrine. 
and it's simple and it's straight from the pits of hell. And if you believe it, you will go to hell, okay? Surprised, okay? God told me years ago, um, he sh I actually saw the Lord on his throne years ago. I saw, I didn't see actually see him, but I saw a huge throne that he was sitting on. I saw it was light all around me. This was years ago in that same testimony that I told you about on my page with this EK Jr., okay? And in this, God told me, he said, many people are going to hell thinking they're going to heaven. I'm going to say it again. He said, many people are going to hell thinking they're going to heaven. And he said, that has to stop. He said, that has to stop. All right. Um, that's what this video is about. I'm going to close in prayer. Lord, I pray let this video touch somebody, save somebody, cause them to understand that this doctrine is a doctrine of demons and is not from you. I pray, save and deliver, Lord. And I pray that um, this video will turn someone to the light, whether it's a minister, a pastor, a bishop, whoever. Whether it's a, um, you know, a new believer or a deacon, deaconess, whatever, prophet, prophetess, whatever. I pray, Lord, that you let them understand that you are the king of kings, Lord of lords, and that they must hold on to, to faith until the very end, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. Um, if you like this video, please share once again. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of more uh, videos like this that I put up. Thank you for watching. Okay, please send this video to people who you know believe in once saved, always saved. It's a, it's a lie from the pits of hell. Um, God bless you, Lord. Come soon. Thank you, God, for all you're doing, for all you've done. God bless.